Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. All right, folks, uh, there were two huge decisions in the mid-1950s, Brown versus Board of Education, and then Brown II that dealt with segregation in our schools. But the reality is, uh, ever since then, America still has not dealt with the reality of segregation. You have folks who have still been fighting this since 1950. For what we see today, we still are seeing segregated schools. Why? Because our schools are based upon our neighborhoods. That's one of the things that we see. Uh, and then at the end of the day, what you have here is, is that you have largely white neighborhoods. You have largely black neighborhoods. We're still seeing, though, that segregation is growing in 2019. Why is that? Joining us right now is Zahava Statler, Director of Policy, uh, Ed Build. Uh, they are a nonprofit organization focused on bringing common sense and fairness to the way state funds public schools. We keep talking about this over and over and over again, uh, Ms. Statler. And at the end of the day, the problem continues to be really how our neighborhoods are constructed and how people want their dollars to go to their schools. And if you make more money than somebody else, you can frankly, in essence, create your own school district as a result of the money you make and where you live. Yeah, that's true in a majority of our states. There are 30 states that have a legal process in place that allow neighborhoods to pull out of their school districts and create a whole new school district, build a new wall around their property wealth build a new wall around their kids and say, we're going to keep our local dollars in and the needier kids out. And um, we still have groups who are fighting that. So the question is, what can still be done to fight segregated schools? And let me be honest, I talked to some black folks who said, you know what? Damn the white folks. If they, if they don't want to go to school with us, fine. We'll educate our own. Well, listen, this is really a matter of district will, right? When you have a school district, you have the room to integrate within that school district. You don't need to be zoned to the school down the block. You don't need to replicate housing segregation in the schools. It is possible to integrate within a school district. What's impossible is to integrate between school districts. So when a wealthy white enclave draws a new border, creates a new school district, fences itself off and says, we're no longer part of X county school system, we're part of our own, well, that means that those kids are no longer part of the district. They can't be integrated. So, okay, so let, let's unpack that. Because what you're talking about is what Dr. Steve Perry often talks about, zip code discrimination. And that is uh, you can only go to your neighborhood school. So are you saying that what the way school districts should operate is that if you want to go to any school in the district, you should be allowed to? Well, really, it's a matter of district policy. You know, if you think about it, when you say neighborhood school, New York City is one big school district. And they have a way of enrolling students in high schools that have interest to them across the district. You know, every school district in Florida is an entire county. The way that county is run, the way that district is run, those schools could be integrated or the county district could choose not to integrate those schools. That's possible within a school district when you draw the lines big, when you draw the lines broadly. But when a local neighborhood says, you know what, we're not so interested in part of your school district, we're going to draw a new line, we're going to create a micro district, a little splinter district that's just for our kids. What happens then is those kids aren't available to be part of a district wide integration plan. And that means that it becomes impossible. But the reason this is happening isn't just about diversity, it isn't just about integration, it's also because the way we fund our school district start at ground level with local property tax. So when a wealthy community says, I want my dollars to go for my kid and not other kids, kid, that's when these lines get wrong. So well, and, 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 the money. and that's really exactly how it happens. And so you have these parents uh, who will go to these places and say, you know what, change it. And look, look, it, it even happens when you talk about on a college level. I remember in Texas where they uh, put in the top 10 percent rule uh, after a Hotwood decision uh, came down. Uh, they said you couldn't use race. They said, fine, you, if you graduate in the top 10 percent of your high school graduating class, you're automatically admitted to the state universities. Well, all these white parents uh, in Austin, Westlake and other stuff 
complaining, well, our kids, you know, all these kids at our kids' school are smart, so therefore, why should this kid at O.D. White in Fort Worth, who has a lower SAT score, be able to get into the University of Texas, and my kid can't? They actually got the rules changed. And so you have white parents who use their money and their power to change the rules because even when you have a race-neutral policy, they still bitch and moan. Here was the point of that policy, though. The policy was to recognize that being in the top 10 percent in one school doesn't necessarily look the same in terms of SAT scores as being in the top 10 percent of another school because there's inequality at the grade school level. And why is that happening? That's happening because of inequality and in resources. It's happening because we're replicating the inequality in our neighborhoods in our schools. Well, again, uh, that's not something that needs happening. Bottom line is, this is America. I keep telling everybody that there's only one agency that shares along with the White House. That's the Treasury Department. If you want to understand America, follow the money. And so when it comes to segregation of our schools, it's still follow the money. Uh, Zahava Stantley, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. You want to support Roller Barge Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. <laughs>